Hi YouTube, me again. Um, right, as most of you have probably been seeing through my previous videos, my um, my previous quadcopter build was part of my computer science degree final coursework. This has now been handed in, I'm just waiting for the, the grade to come back for that one. Um, but it's left me with a little bit of a hole and some spare time, so I'm at it again. I'm going to build another one, uh, but this time I'm going to go for a smaller form factor than my previous one. My previous one was a 450mm build, um, so I, I intend to go a lot smaller. This time I'm going to do 250mm build. Now this video is going to be a bit of an unboxing, kind of showing you the parts I'm going to use, and my intention is to, to build this quad um, with, in a series of videos you know, because it's, it's quite nice for people to see the process, how you build it. Uh, gives you the opportunity to ask me questions, and I love answering your questions. Even if you may think they're silly, there's no such thing as a silly question. If you don't know something, ask a question. You know, I may not know the answer, and we can try and find the answer. But yeah, so as, as I said, this is going to be a video where I'll just talk about some of the products I'm using, and where I got them from, and my, um, my views on them before I put it all together. Um, in essence, the the build I'm going for is very, very similar, if not almost the same, as the Hobby King FPV 250. It's um, their so-called racing quadcopter. Um, I, I love the look of this thing. It is It looks really nice and small and tidy, which is exactly the route I want to go down. Um, but instead of using the, the KK 2.1 board that they recommend, I'm actually going to use my own software and my own flight controller. So, uh, without further ado, I'll get this started. Now, some of these bags and parcels I have already opened before, so it's not like a complete, oh, wow, look at this, I haven't seen this before. I've, I have had a quick peek at all of these. Um, so, you know, this is, this is just so I can talk about it. So we'll start with the frame first. So this is the, the Hobby King FPV 250 frame. Most, you know, it's a very popular frame right now. This the the frame itself costs six pounds from Hobby King, so which is it's hardly anything six pounds for a frame. It is it's it's solid single piece construction um, with a nice square inlet. You've got your little Velcro strap holes if you want to attach your battery underneath, which is what I'm going to do. Um, you've got some little recesses here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. You might catch it in the light. You see like there and in the far corners. Those are you can drill some holes into here to attach your flight controller board. Um, it's nice and light. The whole the whole frame itself, including the bits in the bag that I'll show you in a second, uh, cost uh, its weighs a grand total of 110 grams. So it's not a great deal of weight at all. Um, and it's also got this little servo slot. You could put a servo in there and hang a gimbal for a camera. Um, for the time being, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to build the frame itself, get it flying, get it in the air, and then I will. Uh, go from there but see that's that's the frame the frame itself is very nice I mean it's I mean in the palm of my hand I haven't got overly big hands but that's it's quite surprisingly how neat and tidy in such a small package it is right so that's that's that bit there are a few other extras that come in the bag of the frame you get four of these these legs. Um, I've seen previous people say that you know they don't fit in very well. Um, I, I did a bit of this the other day. Um, you know, one of the you'll notice one of these holes. I think it's the front one. Is always just that little bit smaller than the rest, which matches up with these two pegs here. And it is just a case of um, just wedge it in. I mean they they are quite solid. I mean, but you might want to glue them in if you like. Um, I don't know whether it's better to have something that flies off under a heavy impact because if something flies off that's going to take the energy and not that with all of your components. Um, what else have we got? I mean if you if you want instructions it does come with some assembly instructions. Uh, it's very self-explanatory when you get everything out of the bag. Um, but you know, it's quite nice. All right. So you get a little roll cage, which you can mount on the top, uh, it's got four screw holes. There are, you see these little bits here, you can either have it this way around, or this way around, 
or as I'm probably going to do, not at all, because as you'll see later with my flight controller there in the middle, um, everything's a bit high, all of the, uh, the servo connections stick out and the cage kind of gets in the way. And then you get uh, 16 screws for your motors. You get six screws, which I, oh, sorry, no, four screws, can't count. Four screws, uh, I imagine this is to attach your flight controller to your frame. You still have to drill the holes for this, bear in mind. And then you get four uber thin screws, which are to attach your, your, um, your cage to the top of your frame. But yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with this frame. It's, I've been looking over at it for a while. I've seen a few builds on YouTube. Um, seen some videos of some flight performance. Uh, nice and nippy, nice and light. A small, tidy little uh, quad. Um, this is the way I, I want to go. I mean, I could go bigger, but I kind of want to make things as, as neat and small and compact and little packages as I can. Um, just to play things around. It's also quite easy to store. I mean, this is not, you know, you haven't got to go hang it from the ceiling or find some shelf space. It is quite small. You could probably even fit this into the box that Hobby King sent all my parts in. It's it's not overly huge. It's, um, yeah, quite nice. I'm pleased with that. So, as I said, that was from HobbyKing.com. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Hobby King. This is just where I chose to buy my parts from. Um, I also do use eBay a fair bit, but I haven't used it so much for this. So, um, moving on, I'll show you my ESCs. So, the ESCs are Turnergy Multistar 10 amp ESCs, and when I got them out of the packet, there we go, I just couldn't believe how small they were. I was, I mean, I was expecting them to be small. I mean, I was used to using 30 amp Hobby Wing Pentium 30 amp ESCs for my previous build, so these are a fair bit smaller. They come with two uh, millimeter bullet connectors. So just bear that in mind if you're connecting to other motors, two millimeter bullet connectors. And substantially long cables, actually, to be fair. Um, so just bring my frame back in. If you consider, oh, wrong way around. You gotta try and figure out where you're gonna put, I mean, if you put the ESC right at the end of the arm, your motors, your wires meet where the motor mounts and then you've got all of this and all of this. But anyways, so it's a nice tidy package. Uh, I'll give you a bit of information on these ESCs. I wonder if the camera will... If the camera will zoom in, it might do. Anyways, so the ESCs, Turnergy Multistar 10 Amp ESCs. Uh, it also comes with a linear BEC. 5 volts, 2 amps, um, and it weighs 16 grams, so not a great deal at all. Uh, like I said, 2 millimeter bullet connectors. For those of you who want to know, um, I've done some research and it looks like these can be flashed with Simon K, um, but obviously the size will get in the way, so if you were to take these shrink, the shrink off, you'll find there are contact points you'll have to solder to before you can flash the, the firmware. But um, I will try these stock first and see what results I get before moving on to flashing with Simon K. But as you'll see from my previous videos, uh, I, I really did notice a massive gain in performance from flashing with Simon K. So um, when we cross that bridge, I'll document the process in this video for you. So those are the ESCs, nice smart looking devices. Um, I'll also just point out when I when it comes to building the thing, I'm going to try and mount them. I want to mount it as neat as possible. I have to make the decision as where I want to put them. A lot of people put them underneath, but I've got some lighting that I want to put on, which has to go underneath as well. So I'll have to be a bit creative. Um, I'm thinking of on the top, and then I'll have to figure out whether I'm cutting any wires or not. Always plan ahead. Okay. So those are the ESCs. Moving on to the motors. Um, so I've matched the brand of motor, model of motor, to the ESCs. So this is a Turnergy Multistar 1704 1900 KV motor. Sorry, I shouldn't do that off campus, uh, camera even. So that's nice packaging, comes in nice box. Very nice. Um, okay, so it's a 12 pole motor. And it runs off of a 2 or 3S battery. 
comes in a very attractive green colour. Again, tiny motor, really, really tiny, uh, with the two millimeter banana plugs on the end, all shrink wrapped. Um, so so far, my my build is quite modular, quite plug and play. If I can tidy up these loose wires, um, you've got some very tiny, tiny mounting screws. Um, but the whole thing feels quite nice. Uh, if you spin it, you can feel the it kind of rotates quite smoothly. And you've got a, a threaded shaft, 5mm threaded shaft here. Uh, so each motor weighs about 13.5 grams. Um, and also in the box, you get a flat washer, a nut, for the, that's for your propeller mounting. And you've got four small screws, which are to mount to your mounting plate. So this would screw into those holes and then in turn onto your frame. Now I've, I've read a few reviews and I've heard that even though these motors, these ESCs and that frame are all designed to work together, that even though that will go on there quite well, the, the whole pack, this whole package may be a bit of a squeeze to get onto the frame, but we'll do that off on camera together a bit later. So I mean, I'm quite pleased with the package packaging of the, the motors, quite neat and tidy, very well protected. I mean, that's all foam. I mean, my last, my last motors came off of eBay and were um, a lot cheaper in construction and just came wrapped up in a plastic bag. Um, these motors were six pounds each. So again, not a great deal of cost. I don't know whether it's just because the cost of components has gone down um, or whether it's just because I'm going for a smaller form factor, but these are uh, 1900 kV motors, so they're not the most powerful motors in the world, but they certainly give you enough lift with a 5x3 three, three blade propeller uh, to get the FPV 250 off the ground. So I'll move on to the power source. Uh, so LiPo battery, once again, um, this is just the Turnigy AccuCell 6 balance charger, so I needed to get myself one of those. I have to properly look after my battery. So the battery itself, again, is another Turnigy product. Um, 1300 mAh 3S battery with a 30C discharge time. Sorry, I'm so not used to it sitting to the side of the camera. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got the AccuCell 6 balance charger. It's uh, the battery. I think is is the heaviest component of the whole of the whole quad itself. And um, my intention is to mount it underneath like that or like the front and then I just have to work out what I want to do with these wires maybe go over the top, I don't know um, I could either get some velcro strapping or some of that blue sticky back velcro here that I read really good reviews for you can just stick that there yeah, not bad not bad at all alright, so those are the, the main core components now those are all very very similar let me move the camera slightly so you can see everything so those are all common for the Hobby King FPV 250 build their racing quad now this is where it gets a bit different and I put my own kind of spur on things so um, oh one last thing and maybe a power distribution board some people just wire up their own harnesses um, I'm not too keen on my own wiring so I buy one of these and it also gives me some opportunity if, if at a later date I want to add something else I can just attach some solder to one of these pads and away I go. I haven't got to splice and cut and re-solder. So as I mentioned earlier I'm not using the Hobby King KK 2.1 flight controller um, what I'm actually going to be using is a product that icstation.com sent me to review. It's, it's not too dissimilar to the hardware I was using for my coursework quadcopter build. In fact, this has got more sensors on it. And, um, da -da -da. right, this is on the back. It says a MultiWii SE version 2.5 from icstation.com. There you go, there it is at the back. So this on their website is about $15.60, so it works out just over just over £11, and it's a nice neat little package this. 
in essence the brain of it is an Arduino ATmega 328P so the same same core processor as an Arduino Uno or the uh, Nano version 3 um, and all the pins are labelled so you've got all of your, your digital Let's see if I can zoom in see if the camera will like yeah there we go so you can see from D12, D3, D4 you can see all of your, your pins across the bottom you will need uh, on the right here to be able to communicate with it and upload the firmware to uh, a serial device adapter um, you can get these for a couple of pound little USB dongle on one side and break out pins on the other the other thing you could do if you've got another Arduino is you can uh, you could bypass the Arduino itself and wire it up and use the Arduino as an FTDI a serial device. So this board itself, uh, you could download and install the MultiWii firmware and away you go. It, it, as easy as that. It has all the sensors that MultiWii support. Um, but what I'm intending to do is I will upload the firmware I created for my degree my degree project and continue to develop it further. Um, oh yeah, the, the six pins here on the left is the ICSP header so I'll be soldering some pins into there just so it makes it easier for flashing firmware. Uh, uh, there's a few sensors on this board. It's okay so you've got the as I mentioned before oh, sorry as I mentioned before you've got the 80 mega 328p. We've got an MPU 6050 six degrees of freedom three axis gyro three axis accelerometer. There's an HMC5 883L compass so three degrees of, uh, of compass readings so that will really help with uh, your control. My last project I didn't have a compass so even though I could calculate your from the uh, six degrees of freedom sensor it wasn't accurate enough. It didn't have a magnetic north so I couldn't have a reference point. And then this top sensor here is a, a barometric pressure sensor so I'll, I'll be able to do some altitude measuring. But I'm quite pleased with that and I'll be doing a, a closer review of this. I mean apologies this has been kind of here, there and off screen but this is this video is mostly to show you the parts I will be using um, and I'll do my own video tutorial about using this itself. Um, now then there is a, because I wanted to mount this onto the frame with the power distribution board, the holes don't quite match up which is a pain. So what I've gone and done in the end is designed a 3D printable jig which will sit on top of here and screw into those holes and then once I file down these pegs to, um, that will sit on there. So this does raise the overall profile of the of the controller itself so I might be doing some recalibrating with that, but 3D printers, they're, they're brilliant. For development stuff, if you think there's something, oh, you know, it'd be nice to have one of those. Um, I designed this in Autodesk's 123D, a free 3D design product. Um, you, it's got a web version as well, so you don't have to actually install the product, you could do it all online if you like, and it'll export an STL file, which is what you give your 3D printer to generate the G code to print file. Um, I haven't actually got the 3D printer myself, I'm relying on a very close friend. Um, so yeah, wouldn't be without him. This 3D printing is brilliant. I think after this project, that's the route I might be going. Right, and last but no means least, to control the quad itself, um, my last project I used an Arduino Uno with a joystick shield, um, and I also ported it out to a mobile device. Now even though they will still work with this, my intention here, I'm going to go down a slightly different route. Um, mobile device control will be, um, will, will come much later, even though it's, it's kind of like a better feature. Um, I like the idea of having a peer-to-peer -peer communication with a, something on the ground and the frame and the, uh, the cord itself. So I've uh, invested in one of these, an Arduino Explorer. So this is in essence an Arduino Leonardo which is very similar to a Nano 
and an Uno, except for the fact that it acts as a USB host device. So you can actually connect this to your computer using the micro USB here and use it as a joystick device, a keyboard, an input device that your computer will recognize. It's not just a serial device. It will work as a keyboard or an, a USB host. And it's quite nice. It's very thin, very light. Uh, it comes with lots of different sensors on it. So you've got your analog stick, you've got your buzzer, uh, microphone, slide potentiometer, you've got a LDR, a light detecting sensor there, four tactile switches, whoops, an RGB LED down the bottom here. Now these breakout pins here are to connect a TFT screen to. You could slot one straight on here and using the Explorer libraries of the Arduino IDE you can draw items, you could make your own interactive game. Uh, the thing that wasn't immediately obvious to me at the time was how you power it from an external power source. Um, but, in, but doing a bit of research shows that these uh, two, these two here, these Tinker Kit inputs, I can attach an uh, external voltage to, and that will power my device. So, so that's what I'm going to use as my interface for my quad, and as the means of communication. Any of you that have seen my channel recently would have seen a video demonstration of these wireless, sorry, radio frequency communication simplex communication devices. 433 megahertz communication um, from the transmitter to the receiver. So that's, that's my intention of my quad. This is the build I'm going to do. I haven't got a time frame in mind, um, but I will be documenting everything, the whole process. And I've also just started a blog. Um, a friend of mine convinced me to start a blog because sometimes I'll write, the, I'll do these videos, but none of it's scripted. I'm literally doing this as off the top of my head. So sometimes I'll, pr I'll publish these videos and realize, oh, I should have said something about this or, oh, this has changed and now I need to use that. So I've started the blog now that the, it will follow in with this build and the videos and run in parallel and it will give me an opportunity to describe a bit more some of the things I may have forgotten or left out in the video and it gives uh, somewhere else for you to read you could pick up your mobile phone have a quick read um, I'm not trying to give you lots of scientific numbers and facts I'm I'm not an expert at this I'm just a keen hobbyist and I will hope that this will take off and hover and as before, like I said, uh, I am still keeping my promise of open sourcing my code that I did for my dissertation. Um, like I said, once I've received the grade, I will be hosting the code. Um, so, so please do bear with me. It is imminent. I am expecting my grades, you know, within the next month. So, so here's hoping. And then, you know, this code will be the, the code that I'll be putting on this quad itself and developing further. So thank you very much for your time in watching this. I hope that you'll tune in again for the next installation of this quad. And um, as always, if you've got any questions, feel free, pop one in the, the comments box. Um, I love the fact that either I can answer your question or some of my viewers, my subscribers, um, they're able to answer your questions. Um, I would never have thought that my, my little channel here has taken off. Um, it's brilliant. So uh, catch you later.